And now that we've delved a little bit deeper into panel methods, um, specifically how they are applied for potential flows, uh, I want to return to a bit of review, specifically having to do with airfoil drag. Remember that potential flow or thin airfoil theory or panel methods, um, as, as they're sort of in their native form, predict zero drag because they're all based on inviscid flow. Now, in reality, friction creates drag. Through two mechanisms. Skin friction. And this is due to shear stress and pressure drag. And this is due to flow separation. So we can estimate skin friction using flat plate solutions for laminar flow, friction coefficient, which is skin friction due uh, drag on the top, Q infinity, which is uh, Q infinity, one half rho infinity B. Infinity squared, Q infinity S, surface area, and this is the same as on the bottom. Where CF is calculated analytically to be 1.328 over the square root of the critical Reynolds number, uh, or sorry, Reynolds number based on chord, where Reynolds number based on chord is just rho infinity b infinity c over e infinity. Unfortunately, most real flows of interest are turbulent, where we can't get an analytical solution, but there are equivalent empirical expressions where CF is 0 0.074 over the core base Reynolds number to the power of one-fifth. But both, um, typically, for an aerodynamic body that's in a free stream, we often would start with laminar flow and then have transition to turbulence at some critical Reynolds number. And that critical Reynolds number needs to be determined experimentally. There's no uh, theory that can predict what that will be. Pressure drag is caused by flow separation. So that's about all we can say about skin friction. Let's move on to pressure drag. Basically, how important that flow separation is and the pressure drag that results from it um, is depends on the flow condition. So basically, we need to determine if the flow is separated or if it's not. If it's not, Pressure drag will be very small and we can probably neglect it. So let's have a look at our airfoil. At some very large angle of attack. So V infinity is coming in this way, and there may be a stagnation point here, and the flow will come around, but the flow just can't accelerate enough here uh, coming around the upper side of the airfoil. And so instead of sticking near the surface here, this streamline will peel off and we'll end up with a region of flow separation here where there are recirculating streamlines um, and it's a low pressure region. Here at the front we have high pressure because it's near the stagnation point. And the combination of these two leads to a net force in the flow direction. Which is pressure drag. So why does this happen? Well, basically, adverse pressure gradients in the boundary layers lead to separation when they're too large. 
and we'll come back to this in more detail as the last few weeks of the course we're going to talk about viscous flows and we'll talk a lot more about boundary layers how they develop and conditions for separation at that point now basically the result of the separation is twofold. It reduces lift. And this is due to high pressure. Over the forward part of the upper surface. And it increases drag. due to low pressure near the trailing edge. So once again, with an airfoil, there's the infinity. So the lift is this way, drags this way, and so there's a resultant force something like that. Basically here we have P low, here we have P high, and this gives us the net drag increase. So again, we'll discuss more details about viscous flow later in the course, but the high level reason for separation occurring is reversal of flow inside the boundary layer since the slower flow inside the boundary layer decelerates more in response to a given adverse pressure gradient than the faster moving flow outside of the boundary layer. 